I literally haven't made one of these videos in years, but we're gonna try and get it through in one take. Welcome to the summer 2019 bank video. It's the 10th of May, and I figured I haven't done one of these in an extremely long time. The last one we did was over two years ago, so let's jump into it. Now, the point of this video is to see what's in my bank, so I'm not gonna waste too much time. It's not gonna be one of those things where there's like all this like hype and like build up. I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna take you guys through my bank. That's, that's what the title was, that's what the video is. So, here we go. My first tab is a collection of random stuff. I've got my kiln capes back from the PvP days. I've got some brawling gloves, some random prawn crackers, perfect chitin. Nothing super important here. These are 106 Virtus books that were kind of shrined to me by cash after losing a number of challenges because of Virtus books. Some seeds that I believe may end up discontinued pretty soon. And then after that, I got my three zombie champion scrolls and all of my skilling outfits. After that, I've got a perma gold accumulator that I recently bought, and then just all of my illuminated god books. And there's actually one missing. I don't know. I don't know where the gothics one is, but it's somewhere in here. Next tab. First off, you'll see a whole bunch of charms. I believe I've got enough for 200 mil on DXP weekend with all the spirit stuff, but I don't really collect charms anymore at this point. My charming imp is literally set to destroy everything, and that's the way I like it. I've got a couple broken limitless sigils, all my teleports, and then here I've got all of my runes. Runes are stupidly expensive, and I don't like running out, so I like to keep myself pretty stocked, but it still seems to happen probably twice, three times a week that I run out of something. And then here are all my rune pouches. That's Disruption Shield, that's Normals with Vuln. This guy over here is Intercept and Shield Dome. And then these two are Spellbook Swap as well as Vulnerability when paired with the other pouches. So that's sort of my pouch setup. This little guy is for Vengeance, and that's pretty much it. I know there's a way to optimize it a little better, so you need to bring three pouches instead of four, but I can't be bothered, four is fine. Next up, I've got my PVM gearing tab. So over here, you're gonna see the things I use the most. So my salves, my enhanced apots, brews, gut express, and then super restores, followed by summoning flasks and super brews. So these are the potions I use every single day. I use a ton of them, I go through a stupid amount, so generally when I run out, I like to spend about 200, 300 mil on restocking, and I am pretty much out of a lot of these, so I'm gonna have to restock pretty soon. Under that, I've got my familiars. I don't really range that often, so I don't have that many Shadow Nihils. We've got the Smoke Nihils, Blood Nihils, all the other familiars you'd normally use for uh, PVM situations. If you're wondering why I've got unicorns, when you're doing small team AOD, it's not a bad idea to put a unicorn in the bottom of your pack mammoth because if somebody dies and you end up in a duo, you can actually duo from 600,000 life points, do all the pillars just from a unicorn. After that, I've got all my food. I pretty much exclusively use blue blubber jellyfish. These things let you eat 750 life points per bite, three bites per, and you do not lose adrenaline. So in a situation where you can get away with using a blue blubber over any other conventional food, the blue blubber is superior. After that, whetstones, dominion mines, just a variety of bolts, especially after the Eldritch Crossbow testing video. I really kind of went ham. I bought pretty much everything and I played around with a lot of different options. I've got some onyxes that I will go through in pretty much no time at all. Dreadnips, some dummies. I'm running pretty low right now, so we need to get some more. Magic logs for bonfiring. Vizwax, I'm almost out of. And then after that, just weapon poison, some supreme overloads I need to turn into selves, some overloads I need to turn into supremes, into selves. If I've had a bad stream or my PVMing is not going the best, or I'm a little rusty, I like to run some gems or dwarven barrels off stream just to get my rotations back to where I want them to be. After that, I've got some ogre thermal flasks. These are used exclusively by me for duo hard mode so that I can get up to 14k life points. And other than that, just some scrimshaws. So pretty generic PVM gear. Next up, we've got the loot tab. Oh, oh, it's it's just it's just stone spirits. <sighs> okay, no, actually, this is the loot tab, and as you can see, this is why I'm not in a huge financial crisis situation. I am pretty much out of GP. Like my coin pouch is zero right now, but I have two orbs and I have two spider-like pieces. So. I could be potentially a day away from coming into over a billion coins. So I'm, I'm completely broke in terms of GP, but this is this is gonna be really, really nice for me. And there are a lot of things I'm looking into buying that I'll talk about a little later in this video. So it'll be good to get these things finished off. In my last two leg pieces, I've had five or six webs and three eyes. So not sure how that happened, but it did. I've got some webs. I'm probably gonna just disassemble them, turn them into another biting three. Got some Trisk pieces. I've got Draconic Energies, Blackstone Hearts, and some Scraps of Scripture. I'm not selling these because they're not worth a whole lot. These are like 100k, and these are crashing pretty hard as well. So I'm just holding on to them. Hopefully they go up. If they don't, that's cool too. I just don't really feel like selling them. I'd rather just collect them. 
This is a really interesting tab that most people probably don't have. This is a tab for guide gear. So this is the gear I use in all of my mid to high level guides because even though, for example, Kopeshes are only a little bit better than perfectly perked Drygors, people will have a problem with me using Kopeshes, they're super expensive. So people say, of course, you need 500 million weapons to do this boss, I'm not gonna try it. So generally less is more. So I've got a fully perked set of Drygors with like Aftershock and everything. And then I've got some lower tier perks on some lower tier weapons. So I've got some Twin Blades, an augmented Mitsuda's War Spear. I've got Phil Bandos. These tacits are supposed to be augmented, but I actually lost them doing Wildy Slayer. I was on stream. It wasn't good. The Boots and Gloves. Staff of Light. Obliteration Staff that's like got Aftershock and everything. Fully Perked Subjugation. Crackling Through Mobile. The whole nine yards. I've also got a set of Virtus. Extra Malevolent Top. And then in terms of range gear, I've got an augmented Royal Crossbow. I've got a regular Royal Crossbow as well for any type of video where people wouldn't necessarily have Invention Unlocked. And then down here, I've got a fully perked set of Armadol with Crackling 2 Dragon Slayer. That is for the Elite Dungeon 2 guide that is not out yet and is not done yet, but it's it's coming. So that's my guide gear. Now we're into the good stuff. This is my armor tab. We're going to start off with all of the different sets of Acto. I've got them mostly fully perked, although I pretty much only use the Primeval stuff for pushing Telos and Rage. The other two sets of Acto, I don't really touch. After that, I've got my custom fit trim masterwork gear. After that, I've got my Elite Tectonic that is coming kind of close to breaking especially on the mask front. I've got a regular set of Tectonic for, you know, what I don't feel like literally throwing money into a furnace. I've got my Elite Serenic that I will have to stop using pretty soon. This is my primary range gear, and as soon as it gets close to broken, I am going to have to leave it because I do not have enough money to repair it, and even if I did, it wouldn't be worth it. Got my Nightmare Gauntlets, I've got all my ring switches, I've got all three Blood Necklaces. I don't really use them too often, but if I'm AFKing a Slayer Task or something, I'll put one of them on. Amulet of Souls, Reaper Necklace, Salve Amulet. These are sort of the mainstay amulets I use in my day to day. Salve Amulet is for the third Elite Dungeon. I've got all of my Elite Dungeon pants. So that's a pair of Malevolent pants that have Undead Slayer on them for ED3. These Stadius Legs are for ED2, and then these Serenic Chaps are for ED3. So I've got Crackling 3, Undead Slayer. When you're Lingot Gloves, Cinder Banes are best in slot on anything poisonable. If it's not poisonable, the Death Touch Bracelet will likely be best in slot. But there are a couple situations where you may want Celestial Hand Wraps. The main reason I have them right now is for Duo Hard Mode, as the Death Touch Bracelet actually reflects damage on Reflect, so it actually causes pushback. So Celestial Hand Wraps are a pretty easy fix to that. There's my Grimoire. It's pretty much a decoration at this point because it's a 300 mil item that costs about 6 mil an hour to use, and it's only marginally better than a God Book. So I do not use this too often, although I was doing No Realm Solak kills with Cash earlier today, and I definitely use this thing. Bye, Solak! After that, I've got my shields. They're all augmented with Turtling. I've got all of my boots. I don't use the melee ones because Trim Masterwork is better. Following that, I've got my Limitless, my Undead Slayer Sigil, my Dragon Slayer Sigil. These are for the Elite Dungeons, and my Ingenuity of the Humans, which is brand new. Following that, I've got my two Spirit Shields. I don't really use them anymore because the meta at Telos now involves Spellbook Swapping and Disruption Shield, and there really isn't a whole lot of point getting a Spirit Shield now. Following that, we've got my Weapons tab. You'll see it's sort of organized, so I've got my Kopeshes, my Prazels, and my Blight Bounds right there, followed by all three Telos weapons. I've got my ZGS, my Staff of Siske, and my Saren Godbow. After that, things get a little more interesting. I've got a Scythe Switch, I've got Flanking, I've got Lunging, a Stadius Warhammer, Dragon Battle Axe, a Calphite Defender with P4E2 on it, and a Superior Vestas Longsword that doesn't get used too often, but I did a speed killing challenge a little bit ago, and every little bit helps. Down here, I've got a Virtus Wand with Chroming on it. It's a great switch for when you're learning Solak, although at this point, I'm sort of into doing no realm kills, so that means neither of the two people go into the realm and you just hit the boss really hard. So, hasn't been used in a little bit. Don't know if I'll be using it in the future. I've got my Flanking Switch, I've got Planet Feet, Gothic Staff, the Calphite Rebounder, which is an absolute carry at Telos, and then I've just got a Bladed Dive Switch. That's a Crystal Dagger with Aftershock 1, as well as an Enhanced Excalibur. A lot of people use the Crystal Dagger over something like a Stadius Warhammer for Bladed Dive, just because it makes your death cost quite a bit cheaper. So it pretty much pays for itself after a number of deaths. I am very glad I purchased this thing. Following that, I've got my Eldritch Crossbow, Flanking Switch, Planet Feet, and a Decimation Bow, that has Scavening 3 on it, don't ask me why, I pretty much just use it for small teams AOD, and maybe if I'm AFKing something. So anyway, that is my entire bank. If you're wondering what my coin pouch looks like, it's uh, it's not looking good. 
It's 15 mil, and my ring of death isn't charged. So pretty much it's, it's zero. So now it's time for the wealth evaluator. My bank is worth a total of 10.3 bill, but it's actually worth closer to 12 bill. I've got the two orbs that aren't worth anything and the like pieces that aren't worth anything. But the big one is the Eldritch Crossbow. The game values it at 540 million coins. It is actually worth about 1.3 bill. So anyway, my bank is somewhere between 11 and 12 bill, and hopefully it's gonna be increasing pretty soon. I've got a lot of upgrades I wanna make, especially to my perk setup. I'm not really looking into tier 92 perks, but there are some really interesting combo perks like Aftershock 3 Invigorating 1, as well as Lunging for Magic for things like the Ambassador. I'm also pushing to 2k Talos right now, and that costs an absolute ton in deaths, especially when you're like me and you hit the deck quite a bit. I actually reset my death counter on January 1st, and as you can see up here, I have died 998 times since the start of 2019. So a lot of my money and a lot of my GP goes into deaths. I'm investing in learning better strategies and the opportunity cost of learning those strategies is sometimes that I'm gonna plank. So anyway guys, that's it for the bank video. I hope you all enjoyed. I thought this would be an interesting time to make a bank video as this is my first bank video since I learned how to do Telos and I learned how to do a number of other bosses. So at this point, I've got 142 ambassador kill count if you're wondering why I haven't seen a video, yeah, don't, don't, ask. I, I don't understand. It's, it's pretty ridiculous. And then I've also got 143 at ED2 and, uh, ooh, okay. Yeah, I would, uh, I definitely like a drop from one of the elite dungeons at this point, but as you can see, I'll go through my racks log really quick. 2,500 kill count now. I don't know what my kill count was when logs were released, so it's not the most useful thing. And then I'll also go and take a quick look at Telos. My max in rage is now 1128, so I'm slowly, gradually working my way up there. I had to recently reset my PR for a challenge, so pay no mind to that. The fastest time I've ever had is 356, there's a video on it. Maybe one day we'll have to go back and get another PR. Going in my collection log, that last corrupt orb will be my seventh orb set, which is pretty cool. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's not normal content for me, and I will see you guys in two years for the next one. Kind of related to this video and the two orbs as well as two spider-like pieces I have sitting in my bank, Jagex has offered me a loot escape stream. That means if you tune into twitch.tv slash the IRS guy on the 11th of May 2019, which is probably today if you're watching this video the day it came out, I will be doing a 12-hour stream where I try and make over a billion coins in a single day. I'm planning on finishing the orb set, ending my dry streak at elite dungeons, and going to racks as well to finish the spider leg. It should be a lot of fun. And if your Twitch account is linked to your RuneScape account, you will also get some in-game loot for tuning in as well. So if you want to check that out, I'll be live for 12 straight hours at twitch.tv slash the guy.